Okay, we've got to talk about the Nazca Mummies. So get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, yeah, just real quickly. This is uh, from Navy Surgeon Jose Zalce. I'm probably mispronouncing that name, but anyway. But yeah, he's an actual service surgeon uh, and he is talking about the fingerprints of Maria. Uh, this is incredible. Uh, here we go right here, a picture of uh, the fingerprints. Uh, there's even fingerprints on the toes. These are unlike any known fingerprints. Uh, I'm not going to play the clip because the audio is really bad, but to encapsulate, uh, uh, Navy Surgeon Jose Zalsa explains the alien nature of the Nazca mummy fingerprints, which are straight and horizontal line fingerprints, unlike that of living creatures on Earth. Yeah, so there's no way for this to be a mutilated monkey body, uh, as proposed by uh, Stephen Brown. Uh, monkeys don't have fingerprints like that, uh, nor has the uh, scaly skin on some of these creatures ever been identified, nor have the eggs ever been identified as known reptilian eggs or anything like that. These are not constructs cobbled together from animal bodies. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's get into some of the, some more. Here are the researchers going over one of the implants. So what is extraordinary about Sebastian is that he has two implants also at the level of the collarbones. Let's do a contrast so you can see it, doctor. It's there perfectly when we do the reconstruction to give impact to the metal. We can observe two other metal structures in addition to the one in the dorsal region of the neck. What is up with these crazy implants? Here's another surgeon, uh, Dr. Zeniga, uh, a doctor who studied the implants talking about them. And in the other, with, with blue arrows, uh, we can see that the bone tissues were uh, attached to this uh, to this plate. This makes me suppose that there is uh, some kind of biointegration, which means that nowadays with our technological development and medicine, we can uh, incorporate non-biological elements and inorganic elements within a living organism, and we can. So yeah, that's a really interesting idea that the uh, implants may have been uh, integrated into the functionality of the bodies. That's wild. Uh, but at the very least, uh, the fact that the implants were fused to the bone and the flesh shows that the beings were alive when these implants were put in. Uh, what were they used for? We don't know. Uh, there's a couple of bodies that have injuries and maybe the implants were meant to help with those injuries, but in the rest of them, we have no clue what those implants were for. Uh, sometimes there's, you know, writing on them. Uh, we don't know what that means. I, it wouldn't be nice to know what that means, uh, but so fascinating, so inexplicable, so anomalous, uh, not explainable uh, by any debunking theory. But we should also probably talk about some of the artifacts that are said to have been found uh, by Mario and the other Tomb Raiders alongside of the bodies. Now, I would love for these to be, you know, authenticated, because uh, if these can be proven to be legit, these are amazing. Uh, I mean, look at this gray alien kind of guy holding an orb or something aloft. I mean, that is that is nuts, guys. That is nuts. Is this real? I mean, are these actual sculptures of gray aliens? That is just and crazy. That's that's one of the skulls. Um, but yeah, just crazy stuff, guys. Crazy stuff. Uh, this is a really interesting artifact that was uh, found in Peru, uh, not in the, the Nazca mummy sites. Uh, but this ancient petroglyph on a stone found in Wananuco, I said that right, uh, Peru, pretty much says it all. It is a clear representation of hybridization, a five-fingered hand, a tridactyl hand, a double helix, and three do dots representing o o <coughs> excuse me, Orion. Uh, so, you know, we don't really know if that's what it means or not. Uh, it certainly looks like you know, it's very ancient. It's hard to, you know, authenticate the age of, of stone unless there's lichen or some other, you know, uh, biomatter on there that can be dated. But uh, yeah, but we have these uh, uh, hands, these crossed hands, three fingers that way, five fingers that way, 
what looks like a DNA strand there, and the three dots that may or may not represent Orion. This is an amazing artifact. I, I want to know more about this. I want to know if it can be authenticated, if there's any way to date it, uh, because this is incredible. This is like the Rosetta Stone of the Nazca mummies, uh, not found with the Nazca mummies, uh, but in another site, but obviously showing uh, clear connections. Uh, you know, Maria, for example, appears to be a hybrid of some sort between, you know, greys or, or some other unknown form of genetics uh, and also primates, humans, apes. Uh, so, you know, a, a, a link, uh, you know, between the five fingered beings and the three fingered beings, uh, you know, the, the m uh, mammals and the reptiles or whatever they are. Uh, and this stone could be, uh, you know, showing a depiction of exactly that. Uh, this is an incredible find. I want to know way, way more about this incredible, incredible artifact. Another incredible artifact is this guy right here. Now, if this can be authenticated, this is amazing. This is amazing, guys, because it looks so much like the Virginia beings uh, from James Fox's uh, documentary, A Moment of Contact. Uh, you know, if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend checking it out, talking about these two beings that came out of a crash, a UFO crash or a shoot down, uh, and were seen by multiple people around, ta uh, around town. Uh, one died, another was taken into custody and then died. Uh, and the individual that came in contact with the being at that time died as well. Uh, tragic story fascinating though so many different witnesses different accounts of course it ultimately wound up uh, being seized by the u.s but if this artifact can be authenticated as belonging to the uh, the nazca mummy site uh, that seems to indicate a connection between the virginia beings and the nazca beings so did the virginia beings create the nazca beings or uh, did the virginia beings belong to some group or uh you know something that created them I, you know who knows it's all speculation that's why we need to authenticate this uh, this uh artifact on the interview or in the interview with jaime masson the other day Jaime was talking about a specimen that they had that had uh, horns or fins on its head. They might have the head of a Virginia being. Wouldn't that be incredible, guys? Wouldn't that be incredible? I mean, we don't know what they've got. Uh, we'll know when they show it to us. Uh, but, uh, you know, fruit for speculation, guys. Fruit for speculation. Speaking of cool stuff, I'm reading uh, Thierry Jamon's book right now about the Nazca mummies. I'm about halfway through. Very easy reading, lots of pictures. Uh, but in this book, uh, there's some really juicy details in it because there are multiple uh, rumors uh, or discussion of the men in black, of the CIA, even representatives from the White House arriving on the scene and coordinating with uh, the government of Peru uh, to take possession of these bodies, uh, you know, like they did in the Virginia case, uh, they were they were trying to trying to get uh, their hands on these bodies, and they probably still are. And God knows they probably have gotten some. Uh, you know, who knows what's going on? Mario was paranoid about uh, surveillance of him and uh, coming and going from the sites. Uh, you know, timing his visits to the site so that you know he wouldn't be observed. You know, hopefully he was successful in that. Uh, Mario and other Tomb Raiders at the time were also talking about encountering living beings in the tomb or in the site, the citadel, the lab, you know, whatever we're calling it. Uh, here's just a short, uh, you know, excerpt from the book. Uh, he talked again about the circumstances of his friend's strange vision when he found himself nose to nose with an unknown creature at the time of the discovery of the second sarcophagus. He added, moreover, that this meeting was not the only one. Several of his companions affirmed to him to have seen on several occasions small humanoid entities inside and around the site. They were about 40 centimeters high and moved through the tunnels, usually in groups of four, five, and six. Mario refused to believe it until one day he saw them himself. One unusual detail, that time, one of these entities seemed to be playing a drum. 
Nazca beings playing a drum. Uh, these encounters, curious to say the least, had unfortunate consequences for two of his friends. And here we're going to see another possible connection to the Virginia case. One day, they had the brilliant idea of trying to capture some of the specimens. Lurking in the shadows and armed with slingshots, they prepared their ambush. At the decisive moment, they managed to hit two creatures, but they managed to escape into the underground. Shortly afterwards, one of the two companions inexplicably began to eat only salt. He died a few weeks later. As for the other one, Mario said that he started to lose his mind, and then he went to Lima to be treated, but he died also shortly after. So, yeah, we don't know what he died of or if the story is even true. Uh, we need some investigators to authenticate these deaths associated with this interaction with this uh, living Nazca being. They tried to capture him, and potentially uh, it struck back. Uh, not the first time that I've heard of such encounters. Whitley Strieber tells of a, a similar encounter uh, during a, a CE5 uh, attempt or, or successful CE5 that went horribly wrong when somebody went in it uh, with wrong intentions and brought a gun with them. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, stuff like this can happen, I, but we need to authenticate uh, that, you know, that those deaths actually happened. We have no idea if Mario or the others are telling the truth about encountering these living beings. Uh, you know, we need, we need to get to the site, guys. We need to get hands on the site. We need to secure the site. We need to preserve the site. Uh, we need to, you know, it needs to be a citizen run effort independent of the Ministry of Culture to preserve the site or sites, uh, you know, with live cams streaming continuously all over the place uh, to catch any shenanigans by the Ministry of Culture or the men in black. Uh, you know, these these sites are the most important sites on Earth. This is, the, you know, the uh, the holy grail of ufology and also the most important artifact or site ever discovered in human history. Uh, we, you know, there, there are potentially living beings there today. Uh, if nothing else, there are bodies, there are remnants of some sort of civilization, at least if Mario is to be believed or not. Uh, they had the same sort of memory metal uh, discovered at Roswell and other UFO encounters and other evidence of technology that is being looted uh, wholesale uh, by the Tomb Raiders. Now, you know, I don't want to be too hard on the Tomb Raiders. We owe uh, UFO disclosure to those Tomb Raiders. But let's face it, they are not the ideal people to be responsible for this site. Somebody else na needs to manage this site. We need to preserve this site. Uh, ideally, apart from the Ministry of Culture of Peru, that I don't have any faith in those people. Uh, but these sites are so important to human history and civilization, and clearly beyond human history and civilization. Anyway, I thought that was fascinating re reading from the book that uh, these people may have died in a similar way, uh, re you know, related way, uh, to the individual who lost his life uh, taking the uh, Virginia being into custody. But let me know what you think about it all in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the like button and the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media, Facebook and Twitter links below. Love to see you guys there. If you want to support Cosmic Road in a bigger way, consider grabbing a copy mug or a t-shirt in the merch store below or by becoming a channel member. Channel members are rock stars and I really appreciate your support. Also, if you want to be on my advanced reader list for my new book, The Bounty, book one of my Cosmic Road series. Uh, see the email below. Uh, give me an email. Let me know you want to be on my advanced reader list, and I will add you to the list. You will receive a free uh, e-copy of the book, uh, and all I ask in return is that you leave an honest review on Amazon when you have finished reading the book. Yeah. Again, see the email below, mysteryroadchannel at gmail.com. Okay, guys, that's it for uh, right now, but have a great Sunday, uh, and I will see you guys next time. There's plenty of other videos on the channel. Um, later, guys.